Hello and welcome to another video on the React Native uh, version 2. This course taught by. Sorry, if I don't remember your name. Katie Kramman, right? So, Katie Kramman is the software engineer uh, that he start, she started at the and, uh, with a mathematical background. And then he moved to work on companies like Formidable. I'm not sure what Formi Formidable is. Formidable company, right? I will take a. We want to take a look at that. Uh, Formidable Social First Creative Agency. Okay, like this. I think is this formidable. Okay. Mm hmm. So this agency that they have. Okay. Interesting. Very very interesting. Uh, it's a social first creative agency. We help global brands connect with culture. Uh, Amazon influencers program. Uh, the other is Studio 99. Okay. And then you have Kit Launch here. I think this website must have been built on React. Or no. WordPress, maybe? Yeah. WordPress. Uh, no right or wrong way to play. Like this. EE BAFTA. Like so. Uh, he looks quite old, by the way. Uh, in connect with culture, right? So home, work, about us. Yeah, it's pretty simple. The website. In 2014, two friends met up for a cheek Nando's. Although they argue about the right dose of spice, they did agree on one thing: that to connect with culture, brand must blend the mindset of advertising and entertainment and PR yeah I um, perhaps I am quite more interested in this particular field if I want to combine it's not only my technical aspect but with the social aspect uh, and also uh, talk about more polemic stuff uh, or things that are relevant for any any one of us uh, in terms of the AI, how do we going to keep up the pace? What are the things that we need to do? What our mindset as society must shift? Uh, and also other existential threats, uh, like so, likewise. But yeah, so no single discipline in charge or climbing to be the lead. Just an ego-free blend of discipline and mindset, uh, ready to embrace new trends and techniques. Mm, that's one of the reasons why I'm recording this kind of video, uh, is to recognize that not only as for today's course is React Native, but also is the underlying technology. Talking about is the hard skill, combined with your soft skill. How important it is to do this in your daily life, uh, and with a spicy, with a with a with a sauce of culture, because each one of those areas, the apartments, are important. So they are not isolated. So we share among them. They are blended, as they mentioned here. So of course you need creative. Could throw on a daily basis, uh, but not every brand should be leaping into TikTok or be real. Be real? Oh my God! Oh right, what what is um? Hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. French. French. Mm hmm. Okay, ah, they, okay, they got this in Spanish. French. Anyway, okay. 
So you don't want to be you don't want to be the proverbial bad dancing at a disco. How do you do that, fellow kids? <laughs> That's why we give you ideas that are proper purpose built for each platform. Tailor it to the app to appetite for change and decide to travel well across your target market. You also get thinking that works in real world, not just in somebody's head or integrated client facing pro teams ensure that your work goes light at a speed without sending us all back to the drawing to the drawing board. And finally to make all to make your life as simple as possible, you get a bespoke, multi-skilled team, access to our senior directors and the process that flex to how you need to work, uh, not the other way around. Uh, so yeah, though there's a very multidisciplinary team here, mm, interesting, very, 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 very interesting, totally, I agree with that. Uh, so yeah, they're creating this. You'll be in good company, Amazon, David Beck, and so they manage is their, um, okay, they're now responsible for managing is their, um, their social presence, their image in there. David Beck and Southampton, EE, 21 20th Century Studio, the FA, YouTube, Walt Disney, and Deliveroo. Interesting. So they're quite busy, I must say, right? They're quite busy, I must say. Uh, so, yeah. In things like this, um, yep. Uh, so yeah, it's San Francisco, so they work all of this. So, so about us, join us. Uh, she, they don't actually mention which kind of people are working with them. All right. Mhm. Mm nope. They don't show which kind of people are actually working with them. Uh, and I think. In, mm, 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 mm. Formidable is a fast growing social media uh, first created agency. Let me actually take out here uh, at this. Okay. Um, so, Caddy Graman, uh, work, work at Formidable, formidable, right? So work at formidable here, and yeah, I just want to sh use their main URL, right? That's right. So yeah, so she worked at formidable, okay, like this. So she worked at formidable, a creative agency. A, a social a so a social first creative agency so they actually striving to capture the user's attention as much as possible and now and now there are a lot of people actually out there competing from that and currently so currently uh, working as So she's currently working at how do you put it? Uh, the the expo exactly. Currently working at expo. You may wonder what is expo. Glad you ask. The software company. There you go. Expo and ESA are an ecosystem of tool that help you develop, review, and deploy. Create universal native app with React that runs on Android, iOS, and what? Interactive with confidence. So I'm assuming here that this is the build 
who something that I quite new to this, I must admit. Uh, get started, your project is ready. And okay, this is the development file based routing. Going, get, then keep going with fast refresh. Okay, mm. can we develop inside of Expo? Okay, because if it is, that'll be great. That'll be great, by the way. Use any library as you can or write your own native code. Uh, exactly from maps, camera, image, and navigation. All right. Invite your team, upgrade your peers, run end to end tests. And when it comes to deploy, create a submit, uh, publish bug fixing minutes, a dashboard to keep your team on track, iterate with confidence. An open source platform built for productions, here 120 uh, FPA animations, uh, over 750k, over 750k uh, product, uh, projects, so more than 75 pre made models, over 50% of React native projects using Expo. Okay, service made for professional. So, yeah, try it for yourself. Little step. Uh, but yeah, the idea here is that because she is working now at Expo, um, this build tool, we are the home for developers building native apps across Android and iOS with Java. Need, right? We're open source. Offer a free plan and uh, pretty much they go off if you're building a mobile app. So we're full ecosystem of tools that help you write, build, update, submit, and monitor mobile apps. Exactly. So we're a full ecosystem that, of tools that help you to write, build, update, submit, and monitor mobile apps. Interesting. So, all right, okay. So now she's working at Expo, and that makes a lot of sense. Yep, that makes a lot of sense that she's working at Expo and now is living in London, England. Katy Kramen, okay, she, she comes from Slovakia and Estonia. My bad, my bad, Estonia. Uh, so yeah exactly i build things to help you build things with react <laughs> you know uh, so yeah blog course podcast oh and also in egghead like so ess expo preview in sdk 50 with simon grimm that's interesting, and this is also very, very important, completely. Uh, course intro to React Native, intermediate to React Native, build and customize animated skeleton loading in React Native, and hack, build an offline cap capable new news app with React Native, GraphQL, and TypeScript. Okay, how I became a software developer, a dev journey. Okay. Talk enhancing your React Native, building five star apps on YouTube. Okay, but that that's basically what we are going to do, right? Yeah, but um, interesting. Software mansion. <laughs> you know what they talk about. You know what they say about software mansions. The most valuable perform here. Okay. So that's interesting. To may do this is to take the choice of what to wear out of their day so their decision making fuel could be used on more important decisions such as So all right. I was introduced to them have a treat day on Friday. So on Friday, spoiled for choice. 
But really, we are exhausted by all these choices. There's been a lot of studies on this, and a very his researchers have found that... An Actually, this is something interesting, because this was like... 10 months ago. Oh my god. Software mention. Okay. Interesting. We are a team of engineering. Okay. We are a team of engineering. Where they're now recording this kind of video. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay. In the field of the Elixir. Uh, interesting. Elixir React Native community. With that, interesting, in, very, very interesting at the ITS conference, conference 2022 and 2023. Okay, that's, that's very, 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 very important. Oh my God, okay, okay, React Native, Fernando Rojo, at the GS, the joy of painting with yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That that last name is quite interesting to me. It's like where are we now, and where are we going? Okay. Our lists are slow, and our images flicker. Our keyboards cover our inputs, and our inputs can't format text. We can't use multiple modals, and we can't put toasts on top of modals. We can't use modern C set. Okay. And all this will work without any additional setup. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That, that's this is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh I come I come from copper, then I find, then I found gold. Meme, I think, I don't know if the US use that meme, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, I came looking for copper and I find gold. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, uh, memes, bro, memes. Uh, yeah, it encapsulating a lot of polemic stuff behind the tech, behind the scenes, but yeah, yeah, okay, so, exactly, <laughs> I came looking for copper, Jesus, I came looking for copper and I find gold, <laughs> oh my god, okay, so software mentioned. Um, exactly, software mansion. Okay, and part of their pot, uh, hair. Yeah, this is uh, her podcast, but it's like learn by doing an e voice, voice a guy format, formidable that counts. It's interesting, it's also in their blog for that. But that's the whole point of this, you know? Is that um, in, she's now in London. Is that look at this, this, look at the way of how you are actually building your own life, because that's what you're doing here. And when you look at Caddy, or uh, so when you look at Caddy, or Scott Moss, Brian Hall, Will Sentence, just to mention a few names, okay, in how they join, they, they keep their shit together, so, sort of speaking, uh, as a way to say, hey, this is how we are getting into this industry, and we come from different backgrounds, uh, and then we align ourselves is to what the markets need, uh, whether it is on Node.js or React Native or uh, in the case of Caddy or in the case of Node, like um, 
Scott Moss, okay? So by building Node, you have obligations and this API design in Node, or in the case of React uh, from Brian Holt, uh, from React uh, or React production grade application. Uh, and uh, for um, Will Sentence, when it comes to talk about is JavaScript, the hard parts. So the idea here is to, as you can see, this particular pattern is look at what they have done, see what you can do with your life as you build this thing called life in this software industry and share that. Share how you reach to this uh, while you actually uh, learning more about how you live your life, how you are a professional, and the new challenge that is ahead of us in the 21 center with the AI. So, okay. So now, uh, thanks, Gary. I'm also going to uh, keep up there because not only the Twitter, but also Caddy. Kraman GitHub, okay, and I look, this is completely mess. I came looking, <laughs> I came looking for copper, I found, and I found gold, man. <laughs> oh my god, in Spanish, because I come from Spanish background, it's pretty much like that. It's like, Vine buscando cobre y encontré oro. I came looking for copper and I found gold. Okay. Uh, so that's quite interesting. I didn't expect to find this. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Completely. I didn't expect to find this. I definitely didn't expect to find this. Yeah, I definitely didn't expect to find this. Okay, holy F. Uh, Thank you. I am so excited to finally be here at AppJS. Um, this year, so I'm really excited to give you the talk that I was meant to give last year. Thankfully, my topic is timeless. So I'll be talking about building a five-star app. In particular, I'm going to talk about why app reviews are important and what us as engineers, what we can do to nudge our app reviews in the right direction. So just a quick intro. Hi, my name is Caddy Kraman. As Yanni said, I'm currently the uh, director of engineering for mobile services at. Exactly. She's now the director of engineering and mobile services. Director of engineering. Holy moly. <laughs> okay. Uh, work at Formidable, a uh, social first creative agency, and currently working as director in, in engineering. Okay, director engineering. Yeah, director engineering. Uh, sorry, director, director of engineering. God damn. <laughs> director of engineering, mobile services. I think this is a very good niche, by the way. Uh, formidable. Mm. Uh, you can find me on the Twitter uh, if you want to connect um, under Caddy Kerman. That's usually my handle. So I built a bunch of mobile applications and I'm excited to share some of my experiences. But this is interesting. Uh, back then. So when me and my sister were little, our parents had this rule that we don't get any treats throughout the week. We have a treat day on Friday. So on Friday, we can tell our dad anything we want from the shop. Any ice cream, any chocolate. It was a very difficult decision making. 
decisions each day, and every single decision depends, and due to change, spoiled this. There's been a lot of studies. around a fatigue, which you might have heard of. And it's the idea that the more decisions you make, the worse you are at making those decisions. Heard of was um, a bunch of well-known people who have a lot of responsibilities wear the same outfit every single day. And the reason they do this is to take the choice of what to wear out of their day. So running a reviews are something that we as humans have created to help us make these decisions. The internet became mainstream. Okay, so now she's explaining a little bit of the background. Okay, okay. It's explaining a little bit of the background and okay. But remember, <laughs> Eulier, and whoever is looking at this video, the goal of this is, uh, which is one of the things that we can suffer from, which is the Parkinson uh, bar. Parkinson law, okay. Uh, the Parkinson law here. Uh, why is not in, in in English? So the Parkinson law here, especially during a task within a public administration bureaucracy and official dumb. Uh, expand to fill their atoned time span regardless of the amount of work to be done. This was attributed mainly to two factors. That officials want subordinate, not rivals. And that officers make work for each other. Uh, so I need to also look at a little bit more about this. Uh, work complicates to fill the availability, the available time. That's that's basically here what it wants to brought up here from the wiki the wiki article here from Parkinson law it's like as you work on a test you realize that it becomes more complicated than you expect and now it's taking up your free time so um the idea here is to the generalization is that the demand upon a resource tend to expand to match the supply of the resource. An extension is often added, the reverse is not true. Uh, and they even also create a formula here, oh my god. Anyway, but yeah, this is Parkinson's law. Uh, the amount of work or um, content, especially if you talk about you have to deal with a huge amount of data. So in our particular cases with React Native as a way to make sense of who are, who are you? What are you doing? Why it is important to know what you have to say? Uh, what you have done in the past as well? Uh, so, again, <laughs> April 9, okay. No, okay. All right. Maxwell Felix, did he have it? Okay. And also, in the, <laughs> I came looking for gold. Uh, that's what happened here. I came looking for gold and I found, I came looking for copper and I found gold. That's exactly it. So she is now working as a scrutiny or so work at Formidable, a social, a social first creative agency as director like this. So as director as director of engineering mobile service and now she is currently working as software developer at expo okay and, and now currently working as software engineering engineer software or software developer software developer 
Sagging Software Developer at Expo. You may wonder what is Expo? Is this build tool for React application? Is this ecosystem of tools from writing, building, testing, uh, deployed, and monitoring mobile apps? Okay. It's interesting because this is also something that has been widely um, okay that has been widely used by all of this uh, all of their st uh, stories here: Cameo, Petal, Goody, Bound, So, Particle, Insider, Flexport, even Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut still alive? Oh, anyway, Brex. Page puns, I've never seen a lot of this. Go Academy, mm, interesting. Go Academy is using this. Okay. Go Academy. Uh, this is just their use case. Interesting. Black line, and there you go. Okay. So, but yeah, is this. Expo and ESA. So I don't know what ESA means. Are an ecosystem of tools that help you to develop, review, and deploy. Uh, yeah, develop, review, and deploy. What? <laughs> Mobile applications. Or create universal native. And deploy. Okay, and deploy. Jesus. Anyway, but they don't tell you what is Android and iOS application. I'm assuming here. So that's Expo. Okay, it makes a lot of sense. All right. Okay. Cool. 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 Katie Kraman. So Katie Kraman. Uh, uh, she previously worked as director of engineering, uh, director of engineering mobile service at Formidable, a social first uh, creative agency, and now he's currently as a software developer at Expo. So that's great. That's interesting. So with that little bit overview, okay, I have an estimate to finish this by. April 30. Right now we are on April 11. Uh, we might or not reach that. Perhaps I, the idea here is to try to do that in the next 10 days. In the next 10 days, I can actually be able to articulate all of these ideas and when I need to express, when I need to explain myself. Uh, to other colleagues, whether they are tech savvy or not, and be capable to understand those requirements uh, and translate it into code. So that's the idea here. All right, that's that's great. That's interesting. Uh, and yeah, this course was published uh, my. In May 5 in 20 to 2020. So the goal of this is just to learn the strategy and tools that we need to build React Native applications by understanding is their concepts that differ from React Native and React on the web. Okay. So in order to build this kind of a, in order to build this mobile applications whether it's from uh, iOS and Android we're going to use is react native and also the thing that we need to understand the jargon the concepts that differ is react native from react uh, on the web okay so who is this called for for any JavaScript developer that wants to build uh, react native uh, applications, uh, whether it's for their job or 
because they actually want to do that out of it. And here's some couple descriptions uh, and a little bit of introduction here is a way to understand is the setup that you need to, especially uh, for running your application and a little bit of history for context of uh, React. Why is this important? Uh, because as all you're going to need is an O. You need a Mac, or Window, or Linux, uh, a PC, and a mobile phone, or whether it is uh, iPhone or Android. Most of the time, I am quite heavily exposed to Android because I'm come from Latin America, and the the thing here is that. Uh, it is time to take a look now at the iPhone ecosystem. So, uh, why? What is React? And then we're gonna look why React, why React Native. Okay. So, because our mobile device, our mobile device right now has massive computer uh, has massive uh, computer. Pro because now our mobile device has now massive processing power. You might have you might hear you might have heard of this uh, analogy before, where like uh, the current mobile device has now more than one hundred thousand times processing power. And one million times more RAM than the guiding computer uh, from Apollo that land the first humans on the moon. And now the US can show up and say, we did it. Right? They can that. We did it. So, uh, that's great. That's great. Uh, and over the this is pretty crazy because we achieve this uh, we achieve we achieve so we achieve this in the in the past in the past 50 years okay so but because these devices are small because these devices has a small interface and they have a small touch base and small screen, their web browsing experience is suboptimal than desktop or um, laptop experience. So even though the mobile marketplace uh, worldwide is include that 70% a percent of the population use Android, whereas the iOS is being used by 28.46. The point here is that a lot of the people that you might know from the US or Europe, they might use is uh, iPhone. But for example, in places like Latin, where honestly, uh, it's, to me, it's to me quite uh, uh, that barely people that do this kind of conference they they don't even mention about Latin. It's like Latin doesn't exist. Uh, well, I hope that can change over time, and we can be more competent. We can understand why we are here and the blessings that we get by being in this land. Anyway, but yeah. So places like India, they only have two percent, roughly two percent, of users of iOS or iPhone users. So because this discrepancy exists, you can pretty much cover ninety-nine percent of the market share if you build applications on Android and iOS. So for example, OS like macOS, Linux, and Windows, they have manufacturers on device 
like, uh, run on top of this hardware, whether it is this manufacturing hardware, whether it's from Lenovo, Dell, or MacBook. And in the case of the mobile, we have now uh, OS like Android and iOS as well as several bunch of them. The most dominant are this, uh, these two. And the devices that it can run, it can be uh, iPhones, Samsung Galaxies, Nexus, uh, so iPhone using the uh, Apple, the iOS, and Samsung Galaxy and Nexus using Android. So because applications run on their particular OS, so if you have an application that, is, that was built for Android, it won't, build, it won't work on iOS, similar in Linux, it, it only works there, not on Windows. Uh, so because of this, building applications, uh, and in order to hit 99% of market share, we have two development workflows here. She described a lot of things which is very, very, very important to me. First is the ability to describe how do we get here. Very, very important. A little bit of history for context. And then how we move on to uh, recognize what are the, the different environments that we can build applications, where can we is now use this device, what are the main use case of our device, May, uh, for example, in the case of mobile browsing, uh, browsing the internet, and how from there we look at now at the market share as a way to recognize this reality, especially when you need to build applications and from which platform you want to build applications because those are where the eyeballs are, the attention are, and the, what the people actually are using. And because you want to target 100% or at least 99% of all of the devices uh, in, that, uh, in the mobile uh, market. So we need to understand a little bit of basics, which is the reason why we all are looking at this mobile market share, so this OS, and how about running applications in one place or another. So for example, why by running application on OS, it doesn't work on app, on Android, and why by running applications on Android, it doesn't work on iOS, okay, because they are now talking to different architectures. So a good analogy of this is like, you're trying to uh, build a house with people that know Hindi, or the people that know Spanish, and you are an English speaker. It won't work or not in the expected timeline so uh, but in the case of them as different from us we can learn each other along the way but unfortunately for this kind of devices they are just fixed set of instructions so they are not capable of learning so but in any case it exists right this discrepancy which in the case of building applications, uh, which can become quite tedious because now you have two different workflows. Uh, one of them is for Android and the other is for iOS. Uh, so for example, in Android you need to run is, or you need Java or Kotlin, something that I'm quite a little bit more familiar with. And the other is on the iOS, you have Objective-C or Swift. Okay, so 
it can become expensive, tedious, hard to keep track of different features uh, on different code sets. And those people that are having those kind of problems, Facebook, for example, so that they decide to have a go, uh, so they so they decide to have a go at solving it. Interesting. So they decide to have a go at solving it. Very, very, very important. Very, very, very important. So this is where React Native comes to play. Is because those big companies actually now are facing a lot of uh, problems. They are at the frontier, and now they have to build particularly strategy techniques and systems that help when that help them to now deal with the entropy, deal with the mess of facing their own problems. In this case, building web applications as well as uh, native mobile application or that behave similar to that. So that's where, uh, in the case of React Native, uh, comes into play. And the idea of this is to, well, because we have now this particular problem, we have two different workflows, workflows. One of them is for Android using Kotlin or N or Java or Kotlin. The other is using iOS with uh, object to see in Swift. So we need to find a way here, okay, uh, to actually simplify the workflow. Only one workflow, only one language with all with one dev team, and most importantly, uh, fully extensible. Okay, so in case of other, when you're working with other platforms, Ionic uh, and Native Script. So they provide you a set of toolbox, and when you need something outside of that, or when you want to create something outside of that, you are by your own. Uh, you're lost. <laughs> That's what happened. So the idea of looking now at React Native is because you also have the ability to go into the native code. According to cat, right? According to uh, according to Caddy Grammar, according to Caddy, 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 okay, Caddy, Kraman, Caddy Kraman. Okay, so you got this. Good, good, good. So this was just a little bit of intro to get myself familiar with that. So what is the set of requirements, what React Native is, and how it works. Okay, I think this is very, very, very important as a way to get, not only as a way to gain perspective in the industry, but also as a way to understand is um, to improve your communication skills when you need to tell or you need to talk to college or someone outside of that. So try to describe this story as much as possible. But try to describe this story in the most succinct and short, the most succinct possible way. In the most succinct and effective way. That's the idea of doing this. Alright. Yep. Yep, it is, man. Yep, it is. So, okay. How it works. How it works. Okay. Oh, uh, 
Uh, yeah, that's right. You can see this. Sorry, not sorry. What? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back. All right, and we are back. Hello, hello. All right. So right now, what I'm going to do is just taking notes of that particular course. So that's the reason why you're not able to see what I'm going to do. That's fine. Mm -hmm. React Native isn't actually the first or the only such library um, that aims to do this, but it is incredibly powerful and arguably the best. Um, but this is because A, we're building fully native like that, so the compiled React Native application is indistinguishable from a real native application and secondly because it's fully extensible. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why we're looking here at React Native uh, and why it's important and powerful because it is almost distinguished indistinguishably Jesus. it is almost indistinguishably indistinguishable it is almost indistinguishable. So uh, it is almost indistinguishable from a real native app. That's one of them, and the other is fully extensible. A lot of existing libraries basically give you this toolbox of things that you can do. But if you want to do anything outside of this, you're lost. Whereas in React Native, you can always you always have the ability to go into the native interface. And adding to what the mm -hmm. It's fully extensible by going into the native code and add something that React Native doesn't doesn't support. Well. The, or doesn't support. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. 
okay that's very 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 interesting here okay so this is the 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 let me put it here so benefits you know benefits you know benefits the reason to take a look at react native is because um, besides besides being powerful powerful and powered by Google oh my my mistake my bad bro <laughs> by Facebook like you must be an agent a Google agent by Facebook is almost indistinguishable from real native apps okay so since we have compiled to native code okay it is almost indistinguish indistinguishable from real native apps and it's fully extensible by going into the native code and adding okay it's fully extensible by going to the native code and adding something that react native doesn't support interesting and i think this is something very 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 powerful which is one of the uh, benefits of using uh, react because a lot of other solutions so they provide you a lot of things they provide you a tool set uh, and if you need to make something outside of that, you're on your own. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, as Ozan says, you can always help out with um, adding new features that people can do. Thing it is, it is open source. How does it work? We worry we're not going to go crazy technical on this. Uh, but basically, the activity is built in such a way that it targets the existing compilers. Okay, so how does it work? React React Native is targeted. So React Native is built. Exactly. React Native is built. React Native is built in such a way, in such a way that that it targets that it targets the existing compiler and that is Java or Kotlin or the iOS mm -hmm. standard Android compiler standard iOS compiler standard platform compiler platform artifact mm -hmm. So there are compilers that um, accept Java or Kotlin and target the Android platform, and there are compilers that um, accept Objective C or Swift and target the iOS platform. And this is exactly what React Native fits into. And the reason this is powerful is because these compilers are already built to handle it, and it also makes React Native very really extensible. Mm -hmm. Existing compilers. So React Native is built in such a way that it targets the existing compiler. So Android has have it is it says Android have it its own compiler that receive that receive that we receive receive uh, Java or Kotlin. Okay, so Andrew has its own compiler. How the notion of compiler is something that has shaped that has shaped the today's world. So Android. So the platform Android. So the platform. 
okay, has its own compiler trans translator that receives Java or Kotlin, which are languages, languages, okay, that receives Java or Kotlin languages. To that receive Java Kotlin and build and build and build Android Android apps. Similarly, iOS. Okay. Similarly, iOS okay. Similarly, iOS has it is own compiler that that accept object objective objective C or Swift Swift. And build, uh, and build, and build, and exactly, and build Android, and build iOS apps. But the idea here is to recognize that concept and anytime you are trying to run something remember those fundamentals and how powerful is how this several concepts the platform the translator or the compiler or interpreter and the language has shaped our reality so vastly that you're not able to see what I'm doing here, recording here, right? Uh, because it is a platform that allows us to actually capture all of this video and then translate into, that can be translated to something, whether it is in a compiler or not, uh, transmit over the internet uh, using a language and a protocol for that. So that's something very, very interesting. You can have Yahoo to Windows, Yahoo to Web, Yahoo to VR. Mm hmm. Or you can have standard platform compiler. So, so you can have, so you can have a React Native, React Native Windows, React native uh, yeah react native window react native vr like you could just add more and more compiler to it you can still have this one so that's quite 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 interesting the way yeah totally Totally, totally. You have repo courses website. What the f is this? Yep. There you go. How about you? Exactly. And now we're looking at that. This right. Think around the sending React Native bridge concept. Okay. Exactly, if you want to have a more dive into this. A coding dance. Okay, don't you have that? No, what? Hmm. Doctor One, 
Then I should do the same. Okay. Find your partner in code and work like a Bosch by clicking the logo below. Understanding the React Native Bridge concept by Marvin Fratchett and why its architecture is awesome at a top level. This post has also been published to my personal blog, A Coding Dance. Here's a post concerning the new future React Native. Okay, that's interesting. How they add this particular technology as a way to read text They're using its virtual. And I can see it's quite mechanical this voice, but in any case, uh, it actually do its purpose. React Native is often presented as a game changer that allows you to run just with code inside a mobile environment. It is main strength is that it doesn't rely on web views like other competitors, PhoneGap, Ionic, and Cordova, but on the actual real materials provided by different platforms. It has built-in access to all the native views and components and to about 70, 70, I mean 60 specific device APIs by default, you can extend it. When writing React, okay, so you are now exposed to 70 specific device APIs. When writing React native apps, we build native UI. And that's the key point. Mm -hmm. We build native UI. We don't use web view for that. Ionic and Cordova. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm quite familiar with this. I'm definitely quite familiar with this. Uh, but, and that's the key point. We create UI view instance, just like we will have with platform specific language. Interesting. Okay, so you are not, okay, so you are not, okay. We create UI view instance just like we will have with platform specific language. Interesting. So you are now closer to that. All right. RTC view implementation implements UI view. So this actually is where it comes to that standard platform compiler, or in the case, exactly. In the case of this standard platform compiler, they create artifacts from each one of them. But the thing here is that um, multiple realms interacting, nothing, nothing else. Remember your back inside. In the bridge implementation. Okay, now this is explaining is how all of this is okay. The architecture behind the scene. And I think this is something interesting. The bridge implementation. Interesting. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So she briefly explained about that, you know. She briefly explained about that and I think it's quite important as you understand what are all of these themes is behaving behind the scenes. So uh so, so, so. My first assumption of this framework was something like they probably created AST and Alpha Synta Tree um, from GS Code and transform it to make it run on multiple devices. 
that will make sense and that's actually what Google Footer does while building apps with Darlan but that's not the React Native way the main problem with this approach is that it's targeting platform for compilation based on JavaScript code will imply the creation of new compiler I don't know any existing tool accepting JavaScript as entry code that is able to produce code for every target platform eventually see JSONet. Oh, and this is describing is the Flutter architecture. Okay. Exactly, but uh, so the so the main problem of creating is an abstract abstract syntax tree from the GS code and transform and transform it to make it run on multiple devices. Uh, so, for example, Google and Flutter does this. So they say, okay, we have now multiple uh, compilers. Okay, we have multiple compilers uh, for each specific standard comp okay okay MB some have tried but only for mobile development with opinionating approach but what's what currently exists are compilers that target their own specific platform for example we have compilers that accept Java and Kotlin Co and target Android platform or object C and Swift targeting iOS platform it exists many compilers for different language and targets. They do their job well because they have been designed to create optimized artifacts for them. Exactly. So React Native is built in such a way that it uses existing compilers. So it doesn't create it its own compiler. Uh, okay. Okay. So it will use existing compilers. So it is built with a really open architecture that allows the code to be run not only on mobile devices but also on other platforms. Exactly. Desktop application. Desktop application, virtual reality, and many more. It can also be used with other frameworks, Wix, a React native for a view. Weeks in Alibaba, a framework for building mobile cross platform UI. A React Native 4 of UGS mm -hmm. Alibaba Interesting Yeah, those companies actually are building that kind of thing Wix is a framework for building black performing mobile app with modern web technologies Front end friendly Wix embrace the existing web ecosystem. You can use modern front-end technology to develop your mobile apps. Wix supports most commonly used CSS properties and most popular front-end frameworks such as Vue and Rax. Maybe more in the future. Mm -hmm. Large-scale use in production. And that's what the, in English. And in, in Chinese, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, all right.
Okay. So yeah, this is another. Okay, it's a but isn't it's interesting by the way. It's quite interesting. Multiple realms interacting, nothing else. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture of React Native. React Native deals with, deals with two realms: the JavaScript one and the native one. Both of them are able to share information because their particular nature of React. Okay, as a way to look at this, because it communicates to their existing. Okay, it uses existing compilers. Okay, it uses existing compilers, which has been shown that actually the output generate is an optimized artifact on that platform, an optimal application on that platform. Whether it's on Android or on iOS. Okay, okay. Things are starting to make yeah, things started started to make a lot of sense. Completely. Completely. Uh, the bridges that comes mm -hmm. okay. So React Native deal with two realms, right? So the JavaScript one and the native one. Both of them are able to share information. They communicate using bridge, which is definitely the very heart of React Native architecture. So the React, uh, arch so the React Native architecture. Mm -hmm. You want to take a look at more of this. So the React, so the React Native architecture. Okay, uh, is by using a bridge, is using bridge, okay, is using bridge, is using bridge. So this is now a particularly interesting pattern in where I'm going to dedicate also time to this. Um, bridge. This um, um, bridge the sign pattern, right? I want to take a look now at refactoring here. Exactly like bridge. Okay like bridge in 10 bridge is a structural design pattern that let you split a large class or set of closely related classes into two separate hierarchies abstractions and implementations so by splitting is to separate into separate hierarchies which can be developed independently of each other Problem, abstraction, implementation, some scary. Stay calm. This is part of the structural pattern. Mm -hmm. This is part of the structural pattern. Part of this pattern, the sign patterns. So, after all, the sign patterns are just problems that are typical solutions, or exactly, are typical solutions. To common problems. So this design pattern, so for example, anytime you need to brush your teeth, you follow a particular pattern for that. Anytime you want to take a sh you want a piece off, you have you position yourself or you position yourself if you're a woman. Uh, or whatever or whatever gender vendor you want to identify to piss off into a way of doing that so you do that in that way you know so common problems come facing common problems with uh, with typical solutions so there's some, of course, there's some benefits of using pattern. 
rules and classification. Uh, and there is a catalog of pattern, uh, the history and the detractors or criticism. Okay. Our pattern, our patterns, as we as said, advertising, it is always possible to use them. Can patterns sometimes be harmful? Yeah, it is. So dive into design pattern. The idea of this design pattern is, as I mentioned before, okay? So if you have a problem that happened over and over and over and over, you're going to create, build, design a solution for that, a common solution, or a typical solution for that. So now I get it why they're using this rocket for this. <laughs> I never understand that, and now I know why they're using this rocket for that. Uh, from rocket, from MCU, okay, rocket raccoon. Exactly. Exactly. Rocket raccoon. I don't know how old is rocket in the MCU. Uh, yeah, I don't know how old is Rocket in the MCU. And not only in the MCU, but as the Garden of the Galaxy, the comics. You know, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, comic like Marvel comic mm, okay mm-hmm Okay, uh, this is in Spanish, I'm looking a more interesting on English, you got it, exactly. Guardians of the Galaxy, uh -huh. I think this is the original one, okay, okay, Guardians of the Galaxy. And they have only four of them. Okay. Okay. And revival iteration of the team. Okay. Exactly. But there is no there is no rocket here for that. And But yeah, you know, it's like, okay, Garden of the Galaxy, I thought they come, their, their, their logo, their images from that, uh, from Rocket, but it is, but it is. Okay, that's interesting, that's interesting. So, one of these catalogs, or this classification, or the, the, the way of all of this catalog of design pattern, we can broadly, broadly group them in creational, structural, and behavior. Okay? So in the case of structural, we have this, the bridge. And the structural design patterns explain how to assemble objects in class into large structures, while keeping this structure flexible and efficient. So in the particular case, what we talk about is how do we now make sense of this JavaScript code that can be now that allows to that allows to generate that allows to talk to any of these uh, other platforms, okay? Uh, yeah, that allows to. So how can we, by having one language, JavaScript, how can we make sense to talk to, to talk 
yeah, to talk to those mobile platforms, Android and iOS, that they generate is the uh, application or artifact that we need from uh, based on the set of instruction in JavaScript. Okay, so how can we make how can we communicate these different pieces? Okay, uh, together. Okay, and actually, if let those different uh, that let those different objects, those different things, be independent of each other, and they can now uh, interact with another. So, adapters allow objects with incompatible interface to collaborate. So, the use is an adapter, might be, as well as a bridge. Let you split a large class of set closely related uh, classes into two separate hierarchies, abstractions, and implementation, which can be developed independently of each other. So in this case, I'm assuming that the use is the adapter. Okay, so how can we, what is the bridge that we want to build here? Okay, I think the using is this adapter. Or as they mentioned here, is on the bridge. The question is, uh, do we have React Native here? Architecture? Because I don't want to... Uh, React Native Architecture here. If you're looking for a new architecture guide, they have moved to the working group. Since 2018, the React team has been redesigned the core internals of React Native to enable developers to create a higher quality experience. As 2024, this version of React Native has been proven at scale and powered production app by Meta. The terms new architecture refers to both the new framework architecture and the work in and the work to bring into open source. The new architecture has been available for experimental opt-in in React Native 0.68 with continuous improvement in every subsequent release. Uh, do they have is for example any little image? <laughs> because they have a lot of they have a lot of really like a react native architecture working group uh but i don't think they have is enable the new architecture for app if you're using expo or plan to use expo you can enable the new architecture at the moment. I will have to wait for future release of the Expo SDK. Interesting. Interesting. So, but in any case, uh, in any case, in any case, uh, the idea here is to develop a sense. Yeah, for example, if I say, hey, what is the architecture here? Come on. Really? Come on. Okay, thanks. Uh, the ar in architecture, you know, architecture. Architecture overview. Do you have any image, things like that? Rendering, build tools, and glossary. Um, Yeah, but it's like render commit and mount. We are going to three creation. Okay. So cross platform implementation, view flattening in threatening mode. Okay. For now, I'm going to I'm gonna stay with this particular um, I'm gonna stay with this particular approach. Okay. So React Native working group say, hey, instead of 
creating a new um, instead of creating something uh, that takes JavaScript and output platform specific application, let's go to say something. Let's go to now uh, create a bridge or an adapter where now you can give in this JavaScript uh, instructions communicate to the actual compiler to the actual render to the actual compiler which is uh, the under compiler that it received now java uh, and kotlin and, and i'll put you an, an android app or it received is a or in the case of ios it received is a an ios it receive an object c or a swift code and then output uh using the android the ios compiler into uh, mac os application or iphone apps and similar to all of this so this is something that is very powerful uh, because now it decoupling uh from a lot of in the couple the code make it much more modular and talking and be able to communicate to any com, be able to communicate to any compiler platform specific so it allows you this to build applications on android platforms or ios platform or windows uh, even virtual reality that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I think the using is the adapter, by the way. I think the using is the adapter here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some sort of adapter. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, the adapter. I think actually that's. Uh, pre presumably the adapter pattern okay so presumably the adapter pattern okay presumably presumably the adapter pattern okay Certain features that native wants to do on that application, and React Native might not support it, and then you have to rely on a Swift solution for Python or so Java and Kotlin for Android. I'm just wondering, this day and age, like 2010, you can use up the React Native API, and if you have a situations where it's not 
then I'll take these for just with the economic where you get a native solution from those homeless. Yeah, so I have had a couple of occasions where I've had to build something native. Um, once, um, one was for, I think for Android, for linking into a particular mail provider, and the other is on my current project, uh, which is actually pre-built for, for my one was for, I think for Android, for linking into a particular mail provider, and the other is on my current project, uh, which is actually pre-built for, for my time, which is integrating with a payment provider that isn't available in React Native. And um, so the platform fully supports it, which is one of the features of React Native. Um, you can, it's, it's very straightforward, it's quite straightforward, exactly very straightforward. It's quite straightforward to bridge into the native code. So if you have, for example, if you need to um, add a new module or add a new component or add some native functionality that interacts with the native Java or Kotlin or, or Objective-C code, there's a particular entry point and there's a really good guide on how to do it. Um, so it is, mm. it is a bit of like a hassle. Like I always like to say that like I, I had written no Objective-C code prior to uh, getting into React Native, but now I wrote a security library. Um, so you, they kind of lure you in with the promises of just JavaScript, and then you kind of start going like, oh, I'll just do this little bit in, in Java. So you do actually get to like learn these new languages. Um, yeah, so to answer your question, it's a bit of a hassle um, in that you try to stay in the React Native space as much as possible, but if we have to go outside of it, it's not very hard to customize it Is there like a... We have... So, oh my god, that's a very interesting question. React Native? And the other ones? Yeah, so... Can I take this for just with React Native so you get a native solution from those homeless? You say in age like 2020, you can create yourself to React Native API, and if you have a situations where you saw, can I take this for just with React Native? Where you okay, this is valid QA, right? Uh, some QA. Okay, so Q, QA. Q and A. All right, Q and A. All right, QA. There you got it. QA. The QA section. Okay, the QA section. Pattern applicability understanding here. Da, 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 da. There you got it. So now we're getting hit into the QA, right? So the QA section here. So on the QA section, is this? Okay. So on the QA section here, uh, is Actually, to take to take note about this, Gary Kramen, okay, to take notes about it, learn from their pain point. Is Gary Kramen has had face has had to face a problem when you need to ditch React Native. Uh, based on their lack of support okay uh, so she mentioned is that one was for I think for Android for linking into a particular mail provider okay uh, linking 
linking Android to a mail to a particular mail provider. Okay. And the other is on my current project, uh, which is actually pre built before for my time, which is integrating with a payment provider that isn't available in React Native. And. Um, mm -hmm. Payment provider unavailable, unavailable in React Native. So the platform fully supports it, which is one of the features of React Native. Um, you can, it's it's very straightforward, it's quite straightforward, you can say very straightforward, it's quite straightforward to... It is quite, it is quite, and this quite, this doesn't mean that it's completely, it is quite straight forward when you need to enhance Mm hmm your app your react native app bridge into the native code bridging bridging Mm -hmm. You react native code to native code. Mm -hmm. So if you have, for example, if you need to um, add a new module or add a new component or add some native functionality that interacts with the native Java or Kotlin or, or Objective C code. There's a particular entry point, and there's a really good guide on how to do it. Okay. So if you need, uh, if you find yourself uh, interacting with this particular code, okay. If you find yourself interacting with this particular, with the with uh, native particular code that react doesn't support it there are nice they're really according to her they are they are good guys on how to do it right now with the so with ChatGPT, it's like we can do this faster. Um, so it is fully extensible. It is a bit of like a hassle. Like I always like to say that like I, I had written no Objective C code prior to uh, getting into React Native, but now I wrote a security library. Mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of this. That's the beauty of this. It's like uh, so in her case. It is a bit of like a hassle. Like. It is a bit of like a hassle. Mm -hmm. I always like to say that like, I, I had written no Objective-C code prior to uh, going into that. So she hasn't, she had, she hasn't, she hasn't, she had, she has not, she, she hasn't. She hasn't write Objective C code before writing uh, React Native. Okay, before writing React Native. Native, but now I wrote a security library. Um, so it, they kind of lure you in with the promises of just JavaScript, and then you kind of start saying like, "Oh, I'll just do this little bit in Java." So you do actually get to like learn these new language. 
So you you do actually you do actually going to learn those language. Um, yeah, so to answer your question, it's a bit of a hassle um, in that we try to stay in the React Native space as much as possible, but if we have to go outside of it, it's not very hard to customize it. Definitely. Is there like a category of, or can you sort of categorize which, which apps you might want to stay away from with React Native, like maybe highly graphical intensive? Or, or is that, is um, that in your so not at all. You can build anything with React Native. So even though it's JavaScript, you actually hook into the native components for each platform. So um, whereas maybe two years ago there was a performance hit for certain really and intensive applications, as we progress, the both the navigation libraries and React Native itself have gone more and more performant. You might have heard of um, <coughs> Hermes, it's um, like a new um, JavaScript compiler that they are building at Facebook currently, which is optimized for JavaScript in React Native. This is a really interesting topic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hermes. Another question is. Question one. And the other is question two. Is there are any performance penalty penalty? Yeah, is there any performance penalty when writing when writing application? Is there any performance penalty? Uh, or yeah, is there any performance penalty or is there any models uh, that that we need to stay away stay away from that do performance penalty when writing application when writing react application since facebook is building a JavaScript engine specific specifically for React React Native GAT. Damn. <laughs> Call Hermes GAT. Damn. <laughs> Okay. Exactly. Okay. So. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh, if you have to EU, which is about turning. And that's just an example of one example of the optimization. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we can do to stay away from. According to her. Holy moly. Okay.
<laughs> His Facebook is building a JavaScript engine specifically for React Native called Hermes. There is no, even though when you, when you take a look at the V8 dev here, the thing is from Matt, um, holy moly, is Pisa, no, it's like, I, I, the only way I can remember him is, um, at the docks here. Uh, is by looking now the V8 engine here. Uh, I think it is heating class. No, it's not heating class. It's slack tracking from shapes or heating class. Block from Matthias Bynes. Matthias. Bein, exactly from Matthias Bein. From Matthias Bein, where he is explaining a bit of this, especially with image, lovely image here. Uh, Apple JavaScript engine as using the Safari and React Native. But it is interesting because now they're using is something called uh, Hermes. They're using something called Hermes GS engine. It's not what you might expect. Uh, but is that you know it's like mm -hmm. Since Facebook is building an engine specifically for React Native called Hermes, in theory, yeah, in theory, there should, mm -hmm, in theory, there should be none um, performance issues. In theory, holy. Molly mother. <laughs> it was quite very, very, very interesting there. That was a very, very, very interesting journey. A very, very interesting journey. So with that, that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.